Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to talk about slow versus fast oxidation, um, what this means for your body, um, and why it's so important in traditional balancing science. What I decided to do is draw you guys a torque curve, as you can see, to try to, um, try to illustrate um, fast oxidation and slow oxidation for you guys. So those who you, for those of you who aren't familiar with the torque curve, I want you to think of the torque curve as similar to um, how fast a car is going. So I want you to think of you're tra driving in a car down the freeway, right? Fast oxidation would be like you're going 90 miles per hour. Now to go 90 miles per hour, it's not very efficient, and you have to you know slam down on the pedal you know most of the time to keep up going 90 miles per hour. Whereas slow oxidation would be like going 20 miles per hour, and you, you're not going near as fast, but it's not very efficient for your engine either. The, and then most efficiently would be like, let's say you're on the freeway and you're going like 65 miles per hour, you know, you're just, you're just cruising, you got the cruise control on. So around like 60, 65 miles per hour would be the most efficient, you know, for how fast you're going and how much fuel you're using. Okay, so that's how I want you to think of slow versus fast oxidation. So fast oxidizers would be more like the car going too fast, Slow oxidation, car going too slow. But as you can see by the torque curve, the, p the peak efficiency is somewhere in the middle, going 60, 65 miles per hour, you know, cruise control on the freeway. Okay, so that's the RPM you want. So as you can see, at that medium range of RPM, your efficiency is the highest. Okay, we got RPM on this axis, on these, and the efficiency on this axis. So as you can see, the peak right here is peak efficiency, okay? So that's basically the torque curve. Now it's important to realize this in nutritional balancing science. We always want to try to get the body to a state of peak efficiency. So, so almost everyone is either in fast oxidation or slow oxidation, you know. They're somewhere in here or they're somewhere in here. And we want to be getting people to the peak, okay, because then the vitality of the body greatly increases, okay. If you're too slow of an oxidizer, you're going to be lethargic, you're not going to have enough energy. Um, and, you know, just living is going to be rather difficult because you don't have enough energy to go throughout your day. And then fast oxidizers tend to run a lot of nervous energy. They have a hard time um, concentrating because they, although they have more energy than fast oxidizers, they burn their fuel too fast, okay? So you can also think of the oxidation rate as um, how fast your body burns through food, okay? Now, this is important for the diet, too. Fast oxidizers actually need a little more fat. We recommend people that are in fast oxidation actually need about two to three tablespoons of fat every meal. That's because their bodies burn through a lot of calories, and if they don't eat a lot of fat, they're going to crave carbohydrates. And um, their bodies are much more efficient um, burning burning fat for fuel as opposed to slow oxidizers. Slow oxidizers need less fat, and they need more carbohydrates. Okay. So fats tend to slow the oxidation rate, and then protein tends to um, increase the oxidation rate. So slow oxidizers, not only do they need a, um, a little bit more carbohydrates, they need more protein too, because protein tends to enhance the oxidation rate. Although fast oxidizers need protein and some carbohydrates too. But the most important distinction is that slow oxidizers need a lot less fat, probably um, you know two tablespoons a day, I would say, and then fast oxidizers need fat at every meal. Now the best fats are obviously, I've talked about this before, um, animal dried fats, they're more young, so things like butter is preferable, or like fatty beef, or lamb, um, you know, olive oil is pretty good food too, trying to avoid the more yin um, animal based type um, oils, okay? So that's important to realize, another important thing to realize is that most people are slow oxidizers, um, even most fast people may be in fast oxidation, but there's usually temporary fast oxidation, okay? So only about 10% of the population is true fast oxidizers, okay? And that's important to realize. So a lot of people are in fast oxidation, but it's not natural fast oxidation. It's either st um, stress, um, they may be going through a hard time in life, and so their adrenals are overactivated, causing temporary fast oxidation. Or a lot of them have actually toxic metals that are actually, because your body will accumulate toxic metals to uh, stimulate the adrenals constantly. And so a lot of times as you eliminate heavy metals, you, the body will naturally re rest into a slow oxidation pattern. So one thing we must realize is that most people today are in slow oxidation. Now it's also important to realize that slow oxidation is actually a less healthy um, response to stress. So if you think of um, disease is actually caused by um, stages of stress and resistance to stress by the body. and Typically, your body goes through the alarm stage of stress first, okay? The alarm stage of stress would be um, like the fight or flight, like a car is about to hit you, you go into alarm stage of stress, you, your adrenals activate, heart, 
you release a bunch of um, testosterone, a bunch of uh, adrenaline, you jump out of the way of the car, okay, that's the alarm stage of stress. Then fast, you, um, body goes into more fast oxidation, okay, fast oxidation is more the fight or flight as well, it's also more the resistance stage of stress, okay, so it's typically what happens first. Like for instance, when people are first born, the children are born in fast oxidation, and then as they burn out, okay, they burn into slow oxidation. And then what's sad today is that you can see on hair test is that um, more and more kids today are actually going to slow oxidation sooner and sooner. And it used to be sometimes you know kid people would be fast oxidizers until like age 20 or 30, but nowadays most kids go into slow oxidation around ages 3 to 10. Um, so slow oxidation is generally a um, more of a um, burnout stage. It's, so your body goes from fast oxidation typically, then it burns out, it burns out its minerals, it wears out its adrenals, its thyroid, and then it goes into slow oxidation, okay? So, what we always want to do is we want to raise the oxidation rate, okay? And if people are fast oxidizers, we want to slow the oxidation rate. So this way people have a lot more vitality, okay? Their bodies are just burning fuel much more efficiently, and it's a more of a natural source of energy, okay? Now, it's important to realize that this is one of the most important things you can do in nutritional balancing science, okay? Because, you know, people can have 10 symptoms and they can all go away just by normalizing the oxidation rate. You know, a person's in slow oxidation, they've got bad digestion, they've got bad skin maybe, um, they're lethargic, they're depressed because they don't have any energy, and then all of a sudden, you increase the oxid oxidation rate, you know, their bodies are going through fuel more efficiently, they have more energy, and all of a sudden, you know, 10 symptoms can go away. You know, their digestion could get better. Um, you know, uh, depression all of a sudden because they have more energy goes away. And, you know, also symptoms you wouldn't even think that are correlated. You know, skin symptoms, um, you know, symptoms, you know, your body has more energy to fight infections all of a sudden. Um, so you can mount a healthier immune response. Your body has more energy to um, release heavy metals. So your body will actually have more energy to get rid of heavy metals. And so it's kind of like a, um, a process where as you increase the oxidation rate, your body can actually get rid of toxins faster. So a lot of times it's hardest for people to get out of really slow oxidation, you know, into a healthier state. So, so that's why sometimes in nutritional balancing, it's, um, the first few months can be more difficult. Because you have to think of it as like you got to slowly get the ball rolling but as you get the ball rolling and the oxidation rate starts more increasing more and more you start you know start getting healthy and healthier faster and faster so it's kind of like inertia too so anyways that's all i want to say tonight but um i hope you guys enjoyed this and i hope you guys this kind of uh you know helps you guys understand slow and fast oxidation and um some other time i'll talk more about um how we actually do that with the supplements and uh what things actually what actually uh supplements actually do that stuff all right i'll talk to you guys later peace